Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we got to talk about this. So, what exactly is going on? Well, Kevin Feige just came out and said something that you could say has pretty much proven that everything that we have been saying about Disney, or I guess we should just focus on the MCU since we're talking about Kevin Feige. Let's just focus on the MCU for now. But a lot of us have basically known for a while and have openly said that the MCU seems to be going down the route of identity politics. Now, what exactly does that mean? Well, it basically means that the only re that a lot of their decisions when it comes to storytelling isn't being motivated by wanting to tell a good story. The reason why they have certain characters in their movies or their stories isn't because it's part of the story that they want to tell. It's only because they're trying to tick certain boxes. And we have known this and have said this for a long, long time. And we have had people constantly criticizing us, telling us either we don't know what we're talking about or we're just making shit up because we're trying to get hate clicks or whatever the fuck. Even though that's not true, even though all we're doing is, even though all we've ever done is just share our opinions and just telling us, giving our opinion based on what we are seeing happening, on whether it's on screen, whether it's in comics, whether it's anywhere, whatever, wherever it is. And people have constantly criticized, criticized us. But again, let's just focus on the MCU for now. A lot of us have said that the MCU is probably going to go down the route of identity politics ever since a certain movie came out. Now, I'm not going to say which movie it was, but I get the feeling a lot of you probably know which one I'm talking about. And of course, a lot of people decided to come out and openly attack anyone who has been saying this, saying, oh, we don't know what we're talking about. Oh, you... Um, you're just seeing ghosts, or you're, or probably the stupidest one in my opinion, you're just saying this because you're against diversity in your shows, even though that is completely not, the, not true. Even though we have said time and time again that none of us have a problem, if you want to have uh, women, if you want to have black people, if you want to have brown people, if you want to have Asian people, if you want to have people who are LGBTQ, like none of us have a problem with this. Look, is there a small subset of people out there who don't want these in their films? Sure, but we keep trying to tell them they're in the small, small minority. They are in the minority. The majority of people do not have a problem with these things in their movies, with these characters in their movies. No, none of us have a problem with it. But we still get accused of being is. We get accused of being phobes. People keep calling us Yahtzees. They call us all these horrible things, even though, again, we have kept telling them time and time again, that none of us have a problem with this, and in fact, you, in fact, we wonder why they're not going after uh, Disney or Marvel because they're obviously only keeping these characters in their films because they know it's go it's going to basically make them critic proof. They know that the second they have certain people in their movies, all they need to do is go out and announce it, and all of a sudden, it's critic proof. All of a sudden, the second someone says anything negative, even if it has nothing to do with whether a character's sexuality or their skin color, even if it just has something to do with the fact that the character's motivation doesn't really make any, any sense, even though there are plot holes in the movies, in, in, in whatever movie they watched, they automatically just connect it to you just not being okay with having certain people in your media. And it's just, it's insane. Now, again, Kevin Feige has come out and said something that has pretty much proven it, proven it to be one, proven us to be 100% correct. And I know now that there are going to be certain people who are either going to say nothing because they know they've been proven wrong, they know they just got caught with their foot in their mouths, even though, again, Kevin Feige has come out and just openly admitted it, they are either, again, going to either say nothing or they're going to still defend it. But let's just go ahead and take a look at the actual article. So, Marvel Studios boss Kevin Feige confirmed that Doctor Strange was cut from the recent Disney Plus season of WandaVision because he's white and male. Uh, according to Movie Web, Feige, Feige spoke with Brian he Brian Hyatt, or Hyatt, however you pronounce that last name, for Rolling Stone about WandaVision and Marvel Studios' initial plans to include Doctor Strange in the show. Apparently, Doctor Strange was supposed to be communicating with Wanda via the commercials that were seen throughout the show, like the Toast Made scene in Episode 1 and the Strucker Watch scene in Episode 2. Now, this is very, very interesting because one of the things that a lot of us have been wondering when we were, when we were watching WandaVision is what exactly are these commercials? What exactly do they mean? And it turns out they, 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 they meant absolutely nothing. They were just there. But apparently it turns out that, no, 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 they did have a purpose. 
excuse me, they just decided to not go through with what they originally had planned. And it would have made sense. Again, according to this, according to what uh, Kevin Feige told these, uh, Brian from Rolling Stone. And this actually does make sense because remember, Elizabeth Olsen did come out and say that, you know, there was supposed to be a big cameo at the end. And a lot, some of us did speculate that maybe it's Doctor Strange because we know that Wanda is apparently supposed to play a part in the upcoming Doctor Strange movie. So it would have made sense to have Doctor Strange show up. And a lot of us, and again, when it turned out the, um, uh, it turned, when, it, when that didn't happen, when the, the cameo turned out to be uh, nothing, it, it, still, it's just, mm. And then, let's, let's just move forward. However, Strange was cut from the show, and he explained why. He stated, some people might say, oh, it would have been so cool to see Doctor Strange, but it would have taken away from Wanda. No, it wouldn't have. No, it wouldn't have. Like, th this is complete bullshit. Like, dude, this is, you know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of, and I, I know that's a little bit different, but it kind of reminds me of the excuse that some people said when it came to The Force Awakens, how initially they had plans for Luke Skywalker to initially be a big part of the movie, but a lot of people thought that it would have taken away from the new characters because people would have been focusing on Luke. Now, I know that's a little bit different, but the thing is, the, that would have made sense because in there, that excuse would have made sense because these characters are new. We have no idea who they are. And Luke Skywalker is an already established character. But the reason why that wouldn't work here is because Wanda is already an established character. P Wanda already has a big fan base. So even if Doctor Strange would have showed up, it wouldn't have taken away from Wanda. Like, so to me, this excuse just doesn't apply. We didn't want to end the show to be commoditized to, be commoditized to go to the next movie. Uh, and here it is. He says it right here. See, here it is. He says, here's the white guy. Let me show you how power, how power works. Okay, so you're telling me that the reason why Doctor Strange couldn't have shown up in order to help Wanda is because he's white and male. Even though it would have actually made sense because Wanda herself doesn't actually know how a lot of these powers work and it would have made sense to because he is the Sorcerer Supreme. He knows how this, he knows how this shit works. But again, you, you, the, he immediately says the only reason or the, the main reason why he, Doctor Strange didn't show up is because he, the, he, the, he was white male. And again, this is what we have been saying from, for years now. We have been saying this for years. They, in, 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 in Hollywood today, you cannot have a play, you, know, you can't have a movie or a TV show, you can't have any, anything in your story that shows a white guy teaching any, basically anyone, unless it's another white guy, they can't have him teach anyone else, whether it's a woman, whether it's a minority, whether it's someone who's LGBT, they can't have to do that because according to them, it's somehow supporting the patriarchy or whatever the fuck, even though that's complete bullshit, even though this is only in their heads, but this is the reason they actually believe this. Not only was Strange cut from WandaVision, but apparently it meant they had to rewrite Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, too. Feige described the creative process, a wonderful combination of dedicated coordination, chaos, chaos magic. Ha ha ha, aren't we funny? This is just another piece of evidence that Marvel Studios has lost its way and they are embracing identity politics. And as I've stated previously, when you embrace identity politics, it becomes the sole thing you focus on and you can no longer tell competent stories. It's clear WandaVision proved that point. It's a muddled mess of a show, and it is. And like I said... Like I said, the re I, I'm always wondering why these same people who say that they want, you know, representation in media, why they're not going after the MCU or why they're not going after Marvel, why they're not going after Disney, because it is clear, it's clear to anyone with a brain that the only reason why they have these characters in their films, in their media, is just because they're trying to pander to that audience, even though... We have told them time and time again, if you pander to them, you're, you're just, you're, you might as well be burning money because these people are not going to support you, not in a way that matters. They're not going to go out to see your movies. They're not going to buy your merchandise. They're not going to support you financially. These people don't care. They never cared about Marvel. They never cared about any franchise. They, they just want to complain that's all these people want to do. They just want to complain. 
Not only do Feige's comments confirm, uh, confirm that the company is embracing identity policies, but his comment is extremely hypocritical given how the studio is famous for their end credit scenes that tease forthcoming movies. That's true. It's almost like those are specifically made to commoditize the next movies. For example, they teased Captain Marvel at the end of Avengers Infinity War, implying that moviegoers will need to see Captain Marvel to figure out how she will fi to figure out how she will figure into Avengers Endgame and if she would be important to that film. I'll give you an answer to that. The answer is no. Uh, it worked marvelously as Captain Marvel grossed $1.129 billion at the global box office, with $426.8 million at the domestic box office. As for the idea of a white guy training another superhero, that's exactly what they did with Spider-Man, unlike in the comics where Spider-Man is predominantly shown as a self-made man. And actually, this is very, very interesting because they say that, you know, uh, they can't have a white guy training another superhero, and yet, like, like they said... Tony Stark was training Iron Man when, if you know Spider-Man from the comics, like they, like they said, Spider-Man is a self-made hero. And in fact, Spider-Man actually went to a character like Shang-Chi. And I, I actually just learned this. I didn't know about this. But Spider-Man went to Shang-Chi, an Asian guy, who, because, which makes sense because he's a master of the martial arts, in order to help him develop his own fighting style that uses his unique powers that he got from the spider bite. So they took... Think about this. Think about how think about how this how bad or how hypocritical it makes the MCU look. They had Spider-Man being trained by a white guy when in the comics Spider-Man was trained by an Asian guy in order to develop his own unique mar mar form of fighting. And yet here is Marvel telling you that they can't have a white guy tra training away. They're all for diversity. We're all for inclusion. And yet you took that story and you changed it to a white guy training, a, tra training a, a, an up-and-coming hero. Do with that what you will. Uh, he receives significant support and training from Iron Man. Iron Man even teaches him how to better use his abilities and give him technology that allows him to create better suits. Not only that, but the idea that Doctor Strange can't help Wanda out because he's a white, was white and a, and a man is completely and utterly, utterly ridiculous. First off, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Doctor Strange is trained by the Ancient One, who is played by Tilda Swinton, a white woman of Celtic origin. In fact, much of the Doctor Strange movie is him receiving training and guidance from the Ancient One about how to master magic and become the next Sorcerer Supreme. And and speaking of the Sorcerer Supreme, that's who Doctor Strange is, and it is his job as a Sorcerer Supreme to protect the multiverse, specifically from mystical threats, as Wong explained in the film. He said the Ancient One is the latest in a long line of Sorcerer Supreme, going back thousands of years to the father of the mystic arts, the mighty Agamotto. Uh, Agamotto built three sanctums and places of power where great cities now stand. Together, the sanctums generate a protective shield around our world. Specifically, they protect from other dimensional beings that threaten our universe. Given he becomes the guardian of the New York Sanctum, it would make sense that he would investigate or at least be peripherally involved in what Wanda was up to in New Jersey. At the very least, he would have tasked Wong or another sorcerer to investigate. Even more so since Feige announced that WandaVision would lead into Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness back at San Diego Comic-Con in 2019. He stated the events you will see in Wanda... You will see Wanda go through in WandaVision epic series will be reflected and tied directly into Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. So yeah, it would have, again, it would have made perfect sense to have Doctor Strange show up, but they decided against it specifically because he is white and male. Almost end of the video. Uh, but yeah, there it is, guys. Again, we have been telling you this for years. A lot of people have been criticizing us, saying either we've been seeing ghosts or you don't know what you're talking about. Or we're just against uh, diversity in, in, in media. Even though, again, that could not be farther from the truth. Even though we have been actually been accusing, uh, accusing Marvel and Disney of pandering to people and not treating them with the respect they deserve by having characters in these shows, specifically because these characters play a part in the story that they wanted to tell. No, no, no. We just want them there because we want to pander. And that, to me, is an even bigger disrespect to the people that you say you want to represent in media. That's all I have to say, guys. Those are just my thoughts, as always. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down, down below. Remember to like the video, share the video, and please subscribe if you haven't. And please join me for the next one. Bye for now.